raise and standardize the level of care for patients with pulmonary fibrosis around the country? The Pulmonary Fibrosis uh, Foundation Patient Care Centers. We envision over the next five to six years will not only be an integral part of how patients are cared for in the United States with pulmonary fibrosis, but hopefully a global expansion so that there's an integrated, systematic approach to care as well as treatment. Imagine a situation where a large group of physicians who are interested in this disease shared ideas regularly and small victories obtained in one center were rapidly expanded to the entire care center network. That's the goal. My patients will tell you that they worry about their condition. Their relatives worry about how their condition is going to affect their lives. They want to be in a place where the care is comprehensive and multidisciplinary. They want to be in a place where physicians are devoted to the treatment of a particular condition, their condition. I saw my dad feel totally alone in this. I saw him feel like he was the only one in the world who had pulmonary fibrosis and that he had to fight the fight alone. I think it is important to have some place where people don't have to be alone. Being able to have a, a care center network like this um, can really only benefit patients and their families. If nothing else, it shows them that there is a group of people out there that are working on this and are trying to make things better for those patients that have been diagnosed with PF. They'll be able to find support, they'll be able to find direction, they'll be able to get answers to their questions. Everything they're looking for will be in one central location. And in turn, they'll be able to then use their experience, which will then help others. The patient care registry is an anonymous collection of information that patients volunteer. Each patient who volunteers their information adds to the fund of knowledge, and then over time, we begin to have trends and identify unique aspects to the disease that perhaps we can develop therapies. This is the new wave in medicine, personalized medicine. Medicine really focused on more individual problems, more individual mechanisms of disease. We have to collect that data so we can analyze it. What is the age of the patient? What is the sex of the patient? Where do they live? What other diseases or so-called comorbidities do they have? What medications are they taking? With a larger population with which you're dealing, you just you have more data points. And you can assess your impacts, your therapeutic interventions, uh, your diagnostic questions that much more quickly. This registry is all about promoting understanding of pulmonary fibrosis so that we can get better at advancing discovery. And so that is the goal and the dream of the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation to establish this broad network of, with centers of excellence with the end result being excellent patient care and hopefully in the future identifying a treatment for this devastating disease. Being able to have a real trusted source like the PFF uh, to go to and to lean on, um, you know, could be a tremendous sense of hope, uh, source of hope uh, for those folks, uh, you know, that are diagnosed and, and really might be feeling kind of helpless. We're kind of the conductor of an orchestra, and, you, and those are the different instruments out there, and we want to help them play together and in tune. They are involved in trying to better understand this condition, to improve patients' lives. That's what their mission is. That's what their vision is all about. They are the ones to make this happen. so far we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about um, how we can help you and how you can help us um, we're sharing a lot of information we're, we're small but mighty uh, but we see that kind of the success is for us to be able to work together collaboratively 
and then we can kind of make this even bigger um, and more understood, because really that's what we're, we're searching for, is for us to, to be understood. So as Dolly put up, we're trying to have disease awareness campaigns. September, does anybody know that September is Global Awareness Month? Well, it is. And um, we're trying to have activities for patients and their families. We have um, everything from, I don't know, phone cases to events in Munich and in Charlottesville and in Nashville. So this is a way to raise awareness about the disease that people from the community together are, are joining um, and, and, oh, thank you, and trying to make it happen. It's, again, it's about a point of reference and um, deepening and strengthening our relationships together. Um, I mentioned a little bit before the video started that we have online support groups. Um, they've become quite popular. Um, so instead of just using a Yahoo group, we've been partnering with a couple um, providers, Inspire.com and, and uh, Rear Connect. So the members from this past May, we've doubled again. So again, for we encourage the online support group, if you can't make it, to your in-person support group. But nothing is a substitution for the wonderful experience you get here together um, with Russell and, and every the hard work that you do each month. Um, we're trying to get the word out through partnerships. David and I have been speaking about um, how to leverage the connections that we have and folks that we know not only to raise awareness, but hopefully to raise money um, for important programs like this. We can just keep going, thanks. Um, we do have events. We have, uh, last year we had over 100 events that people held around the country. That was through Team PFF. Um, Global Awareness Day, as I mentioned, is in September. It's not day anymore, now it's a month. We have an event called Broadway Belts for our PFF. That's a signature event that we have. Um, she's a pretty amazing woman named Julie Halston. She's a Broadway actress, and she lost her best friend but to the disease, and also now her husband has it. So she brings, this is the fourth time she's having this, and um, it's at the end of the month. You don't need to be a Broadway actress to have an event, um, but yeah, it's important for us to kind of come together and do what's best for us um, as individuals. And then we do have a great benefit where we acknowledge our volunteers. It's a volunteer recognition event, as well as um, to honor those who have made significant inroads in, in the field of research. So I guess lastly is we wanted to answer some questions that you might have and, and to take your suggestions. We're trying to figure out how to get people involved, how to build this network. We're trying. We're, um, We've been hard at it for the last three, three and a half years, but we know that there's still more to do. Um, so we have had people plan events. We've had people um, take pictures of their wristbands and send it virally. Um, we've had a whole host of things that people have done. Um, we try to encourage people again to come to support groups, host your own support group, um, be a part of uh, a town hall meeting like Ron is, was asking me one. We just were able to bring on our, our chief medical officer, Greg Cosgard, who was in the video, as well as Kevin Flaherty, who's at Michigan, um, as our chairman of our steering committee. So we'll be having a, a town hall where you'll get to log on and, and at least virtually meet them, and they'll answer some questions. So um, these are just some things that people do currently to volunteer and to participate, but we're always looking for more suggestions. Um, I'm not sure. Um, so again, it, it's this is really special to Dolly and I because this this means to us it's a, it's of a personal nature, but it's also something that we feel incredibly passionate about and honored to be with you all. Um, we, what we do every day is really working hard for you, but we need to know what you think as well. So with that, I'm going to see if you have any questions or suggestions that we could take back with us. There were some good questions so far, maybe <laughs> we hit the, the mark there. Everybody have their collateral materials to take? Good. Please share them, read them, 
give us your suggestions. If you would like to be featured in a story, we'd love to be able to do that. Right, Dottie? <laughs> it, it helps to share the story. Really oh, let me ask you a question. Yes, Peter. Is, yeah, okay. Thank you. Because All right. nobody asks a question, that. then I'll ask a question. Is there a face for pulmonary fibrosis? Is there a face? And like, uh, I know there were discussions about uh, you have a disease, ALS, and mm -hmm. that's uh, Lou Gehrig disease. Is there a face for? Yes. Well, I'm going to toss this back to you. Do you think there should be a face, or are we the faces? Well, that's something you could consider, like a multiple, uh, like bring up a logo with like a lot of faces, and not mm -hmm. just old people, but also young people, because it's more and more becoming a young people disease right. too. Right, 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 exactly. And it's it's now defined in the, in the world as a a disease for young for old people, but we now see eighteen year olds. Right. And, yeah. So. And I agree with that a lot because even when I was on oxygen. Because I am the age that I am and I used to hang with a lot of people, I actually had to get me a t-shirt made that said, yes, this is oxygen, and on the back it said, it does not define me. Because a lot of people look at you and they judge you, you know, and it's, it made it difficult for me to wear my oxygen because I was embarrassed, or because I didn't want to get the questions, or because, you know, so it's a lot of vanity, I guess, that goes along with being ill, no matter what kind of illness you have. But I think if you do put a face to it, let people know that, hey, this happens to everybody, not just older people, you know. <coughs> so I think that's a good idea. Yeah. You're right. You know, we lost that girl <coughs> October when was 41 years old. Right. That's not. Yeah, but it was, Facebook, it was just a girl that was 18, 18 yep, years old. Exactly. I mean, she was a beautiful young girl, and you're like, wow. And I know that other people have looked at it, and when I showed it to my wife, it's like, no, just, that's so sad. Where it still has this stigma of being an old people's disease, so we should be looking at it more like, could you set maybe a, su a suggestion like bringing more faces in there, even in the website, young people's uh, in the website. Yeah, I think, I think, I think all of you. Thank you. There's Very so good many point. that don't know what it is, but you're right, uh, Peter, that, that it's considered an old <coughs> thing by those who know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the diversity of those that are affected. Um, you know, scientific research tells us that the majority of patients that are affected by this disease are in an older um, age group. But it doesn't preclude that it does affect people who are younger. We actually have a very good working relationship with another organization who serves uh, pediatric patients. There are some, you know, real medical differences to the diseases but we do partner with them on a number of, of things. Um, I know that in my former, in my former life, uh, we partnered with them on, we continue to partner with them in the scientific community to look for um, re, you know, research into the, the cause and, and treatment of the disease. Okay, so, so we should on the website take out the, most of the time it's 50 and over. Just bring well, it to 20 and over. we can't, we, you know, I, I'd love to be able to do that, but we have to have some scientific evidence of that before that happens. Um, yeah. We need more publications. <coughs> we need more young people.